What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and you already know what time it is. It is Wednesday. It is Real Talk Wednesday. So I'm about to dish out the dirt. Before I even start, the wig that I'm actually wearing is by, um, oh my gosh. I think it's by Free Trust Equal or Sensational. It's one of those. I will put it below for you girls. I already did a video on it. And I absolutely love it. It's so pretty. Really, really pretty. So, of course, it's a synthetic lace front. And the shirt that I'm wearing today, I have to show this shirt off because this is from my son's line, which is No Luck Brand. He just came out with his own clothing line. And he started off making shirts and hats. So, it will be popping really soon. But, of course, I have to show my love and support. So, this is for my eldest son. Um, and I'm so happy to say that we are finally back as a family speaking and talking and I'm super super duper happy about that so yes so this is the shirt that he designed and all of these are made by hand he does these designs himself and I'm absolutely in love with the shirt he sent it home with my other son that went to New York for a couple of weeks and yes really feeling the shirt so i will post his instagram information below make sure you follow him and also follow his clothing brand on instagram as well so yes big shout out to my son jerron for the shirt i love it and i do have it in my outfit of the day video or rather my plus size um lookbook um try on video so this was the last piece that i showed we always save the best for last you know what i'm saying and the jeans that i have on in the video as well are made by my other son so i have two sons that design clothes one is about to be 18 and one is about to be 24. so yes if you have a real talk issue that you would like to be dished out here on real talk wednesdays then you can always send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that way i know it is a real talk issue and if you want to change the names of yourself or your characters in an email please go ahead and do so and let me know in advance so that way i know i don't have to make up any names or anything like that so yes so let's get on to this real talk because the first first scenario or the first episode or situation is all about me and my breakup, okay? Mm. So I already had me a drink today, super early, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It is still daylight out, so I said, let me get this video done. So as you girls know, I have, um, last week I did announce that I am once again single. So anyway, like I was saying, I, I did um, a, a real talk last week, and I did announce that I was single once again. I did break up with my boyfriend, um, and I was very happy, and I'm still so happy because things happen for a reason. You get those red flags and it's just like hmm what's about to go down or you just start noticing shit that really ain't right you know what i'm saying you start getting suspicious and then you start saying things to the person so let's just start off like this this nigga is on his way back to new york right as we speak he is being extradited by the federal marshals back to new york um it started last monday we got into a confrontation in my home where my kids were not here. They were, of course, in school. Now, mind you, I started noticing little things like jealousy, always bringing his and I's son up because we do have an 18-year-old son together, it's kind of comparing himself to my son, basically, in, you know, in certain ways. Like, I would tell him, stop bringing people to my house. I don't want people in my house. I don't want people to my house. Oh, you got your son. He could bring... First of all, stop comparing yourself because you're 43 years old, okay? And my son is now 17. Don't compare yourself to him because those are his friends. You got these strange motherfuckers that I don't know and I don't want them in my house or I don't want them to know where I live. Second of all, you've been out since October. You held a job for like a month, a month and a half, and you didn't have a job since then. You're telling me you're putting in applications after applications. It seems pretty damn hard to put applications, 25 applications, so-called, you said you did in one day, on your mobile device. Most mobile devices require you to fill out an online application on a regular desktop or laptop computer. So I find it really hard to fill out 25 applications within an hour. Let's also mention that he was on federal probation in New York. 
kind of switched between New York and Arizona. It was a probationary period here. Well, let's see. You came up with dirty urine. Hmm, not so cool. And then on Monday, we get into a confrontation. And when you think you are about to put hands on me or touch me, it becomes an issue. So we got into a physical altercation or what have you. And I ended up bashing his face in with my phone which no longer works because I kept digging him in his face with the corners of it. So I ended up getting a new phone thanks to my phone company. So I got the Galaxy 7. Really did love this phone a lot because it's a lot bigger, um, but it wasn't working after the altercation. I ended up having to text my daughter to call the cops and send the cops to my home. He was escorted out of my home as well as that as he was escorted to the jail in Phoenix <clears throat> where his probation officer in Arizona was notified as well as his other probation officer in New York because they kind of shared the case together. When you're on a federal probationary period and you go from one state to another, they give you a probationary period in that new state. You fucked it up. So, meanwhile, before prior to this, here's my thing, like I said before, I find it very unattractive for a man not to have any source of income. You don't got no place to stay, you don't got no car, you don't got no income. For, we, for one, that's really unattractive. And not only that, like I said to him or in the video last week, I'm not going to bash him, I'm going to just leave it at that. But you want to go and you want to bash me to your baby mother? Like, really? Um, the day after he got arrested, now, like I said, I don't find it attractive at all. So I started getting really irritated with dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to sleep with him no more. And it had a lot of reasons to do with you don't have a job. And you're up in my house. And we can't have that. And I was constantly saying shit. But I guess you feel like because you mopped the kitchen floor or you cleaned stuff in my house that it made it okay for you. You know, you constantly bring this shit up. Whatever. I don't really give a shit about you mopping and cleaning dishes because I do the same shit amongst that. I pay my motherfucking bills and I take care of my household. Now that started irritating me, but then you started becoming really petty, saying things like, oh, well, I bought you that iMac desktop and that new Canon camera. If you don't want to be with me, I'm going to take it back. You could just give it to me now. I'll take it back if you don't want to be with me. He started saying things like this, like, you know, over time. And here's my thing. You're not about to hold up no fucking electronics or any type of device or any type of gift that you have purchased for me over my head. Because like I said to him, you can take your shit the fuck back and go find yourself a car so that way you can get to that so-called new job that you come you got coming up as an appliance technician okay go pawn the shit and buy yourself some, a, a hoopty ride and also get yourself a motherfucking apartment okay he oh, i'm just joking with you I'm, i love you and listen we're not gonna go there i'm not gonna allow you to keep telling me you bought this you bought that for me because if we really need to go there then we can fucking go there and it's gonna be a big fucking altercation because i can so i can say you using my water you losing my you using my electricity you using my cable you eating my food you driving my motherfucking car okay so let's not be on some petty shit because i can say all these type of things to you and have your feelings feel like this fucking big now mind you the day after he got arrested he got his tablet here my house I said, let me go on this tablet. I'm going to play a game because I couldn't play it on my phone anymore because the screen wouldn't slide properly. So I went and I installed the game on his tablet. And I said, oh, let me check to see if his Facebook page is still signed in. Sure enough, his Facebook page was still signed in. So I go to the Facebook Messenger because they, you can't view the messages through the mobile app on Facebook. So I go through the Facebook Messenger. There are all these random bitches on Facebook that he's trying to get with 
telling them all these lies. One of the random bitches that he was trying to get with, he was talking to her about my eight-year-old daughter, saying things like, oh, well, her mother spoils her, and she's overweight, she needs to lose some weight. Talking about my daughter Mumsy, how my daughter Mumsy is overweight, she needs to lose some weight. Oh, he want to say something to me about it, but all I'm going to do is get mad, he going to end up having a bar for me. All of this shit, you talking about my kids on there. Then I scroll up, and I see one of his baby mothers message to him i love you first thing i see is a video so she sends him a video through private messenger so i click the video all i hear is oh daddy oh daddy daddy i'm like oh that's that we don't call her candace that's candace and then I, i'm like that look like it could be candace then sure enough the camera zoom in and who do I see but this nigga fucking her while he was in New York for the 30 days. He was there. He was there uh, back in March. He was there during Thanksgiving. You know, he had to go to court for family, child support, what have you. So you're fucking. But you're constantly in my face telling me I'm playing head games with you because I don't want to have sex with you. And that I'm probably cheating on you. And you know I'm cheating on you and all of this shit. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take his fucking mugshot and I'm going to post it on his timeline on Facebook along with this video. Because you couldn't see her face, but you could see his and his little dick. I said, no, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to post his mugshot. So Candace, his baby mother, she starts sending him a message. Nobody knows that he's in jail. So I sent her the mugshot. She thinks it's him. Hey, babe, what's up? What happened? Oh, I got a domestic violence dispute. This is me pretending to be him. Well, what happened? I'm on my way back to New York. Well, just come home, you know. You done gave me the money for this crib and bought these TVs. Just come home. So, you guys have a crib together? You guys what, uh, got an apartment together? He's buying TVs, huh? Okay. So, then I said, this is not babe. This is April. His son's mother. She thought I was some random chick. I said, well, you know what, Candace? You may not know what's going on, but your baby daddy um, is probation up here in Arizona. And if you really need to know what's going on, send me a number. I'll be more than happy to call you. So she gives me her number, and I was like, a nice video, by the way. You know, I said that too. We were on the phone for like three hours. Come to find out, she didn't know anything about me. She knew he had a son. She never knew my name. All he told her was that they have a six-year-old son together. That I'm bipolar, crazy, how I wouldn't leave him alone. All this crazy shit. And I'm like, are you serious? And how he lives in a, a witness protection program apartment. And then he lives with somebody else now. And, and he stays on their couch. And he's trying to get his stuff together so that they can move in. And she can come up here. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. So let me send you all these pictures. Because I don't need to lie. There's no reason for me to lie about anything. Um, you know what I'm saying? There's no reason to lie about anything. Especially not a man that I don't even fucking want. You know what I'm saying? So we talking and talking and talking. I'm telling her everything that went down. And she was like, she's done. She's totally done. I'm to find out she's carrying a baby. She's pregnant. That's a different issue. She's not even dealing with that shit anymore. You know, things happen. Shit does happen. You take care of those issues. Anyway, I speak to her again yesterday. Because, you know, we became cool. Whatever. He calls her collect. She lets him start off telling the story. He said that he was at his friend's house and some crazy bitch came running in there and started trying to attack him. He had to beat the bitch up. They put him in jail. He on his way back to New York um, being extradited. She was like, well, that's nice to hear. And I'm, she said, excuse me, I'm sorry to hear that. However, I did speak to April. So he became quiet for 20 seconds, she said. Then he started on with, oh, 
How did you speak to that fat, ugly bitch? She's a fucking ugly bitch. Oh, my gosh. She be trying to get with me. Um, but you were staying at her house. I wasn't fucking staying with her. I have the pictures, she told him. She's crazy. I would sleep on the couch. She would try to force me every day to come upstairs and have sex with her. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even eat nothing in her house. She's all ugly and fat. She probably needs to die. And all Just talking mad greasy about me. So Candace says, funny thing, I follow her on Instagram. And um, she's far from ugly and she's far from fat. I don't even know what she's doing with you. Cause you ain't shit. The E's threatening, <clears throat> telling her, "Oh, I'm gonna put her in jail. He's gonna put me in jail because I gashed his face up, and he had to go to the forensic nurse. Up here, you go to the forensic nurse when you have like markings and dealings with a fight, okay? And they take photos. So I had to go too. You got what you deserve, dude." But here's the thing, why are you talking shit like he talking mad greasy about me on some real shit? Like you don't even have a pot to piss in, let alone anything decent. And you're a womanizer, an opportunist, a user, a liar. You can't fuck, but I was begging you to have sex with me. Three minutes, okay, in the sex game, three minutes. And those three minutes were not very fulfilling, okay? That's why I have a toy. And these right here. Because I can please my own fucking self. Now like I said, I wasn't going to bash him. I was just going to leave it at that. But you're not about to get on no phone calls. And start talking shit about me. Telling people that I'm fat and I'm ugly. And I'm crazy and I want you. When you. Was the buster. The broke down buster. Okay. Now. You know. You was going to get released. Last Friday. He was going to get released. But I took care of that. Here's the thing. Don't ever try to play me and disrespect me. Don't come up in my surroundings and feel like you're about to pull the wool over my eyes and get one over on me. You might get away with a couple things for a minute, but a bitch ain't fucking stupid, okay? You know what I'm saying? If you want to call the police on me, go right the fuck ahead. I'll be here waiting for them. Not only that, but you don't know who the fuck I know. Why you think your ass got extradited out of Phoenix so damn fast and now you in Texas some fucking where with the uh, federal marshals? Don't fucking play on my intelligence. Don't try to use me. And don't tell bitches, oh yeah, I just was using her to get what I needed. No, nigga, you was using me because you're a snitch ass and you can't go back to New York. That's why you're using me. See, I find out every fucking thing, okay? And not only that, like I said, you don't know who I know. And on top of that, you don't know who I'm related to and what my family members do for a living. Because never once do I indulge and give you all the information about what my family members do for a living or how much finances I have. I don't indulge in conversation with men about who the fuck and what the fuck I got going on. Because you never know. They greasy and grimy. And just like this motherfucker right here, greasy and grimy. You're going to be sitting up in somebody's face begging them for sex, okay? Begging me. Telling me on Monday, we don't fuck. You don't fuck me no more. Uh, okay, yes, that's right. I haven't had sex with you in like two and a half weeks. Big fucking deal. It really didn't mean much to me. And then you're going through my um, my iPad and my iCloud account. And you finding my old numbers to this dude I used to mess with out here. And then you texting him off of strange numbers pretending to be me. And then he's texting me like, yo, what's up? And I'm asking him why you texted me. You know what I'm saying? Then I find out why. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> like, or some real bitch shit. And you talking about my kids, saying my daughter's overweight. Talking about me, saying I'm fat and ugly and I'm crazy. I might can be a crazy bitch. I can be. But if you strike me the wrong way, I can get overly crazy. But here's the thing. Don't never try to step on my motherfucking toes or bite the hand that feeds you. You know what I'm saying? You don't do no bitch shit like that. All he keep doing is talking shit about me now. I'm this and I'm that. I pray for the day. Give me one phone call with you. One phone call. I dare you. I wish to God that you would fucking call my goddamn phone and try to say some shit to me. Because like I told him, you really don't know who you fucking dealing with. Okay? You want to step on my toes threaten me and all of this crazy shit. All right, nigga. I'm not the one sitting in the federal marshals 
holding pin, being extradited back to a state where nobody fucking likes you and you're not wanted and you're scared for your life. Cowards try to fight women. Punk bitches try to fight women. Like I said, I have no tolerance for non-purpose as Negroes ever, okay? Ever. I just started getting my ducks in a row and I just started evaluating the situation and like really investigating, you know what I'm saying? Like, hmm, what's going on with this nigga? Let me get this shit found out. Let me, let me check into this. Yo, fam, I need you to check on this, all right? And like I said, yo, fam, you really don't know who you're dealing with and you really don't know what my family is into and what they do for a living. So I would highly suggest not to fucking try to step on my toes, okay? Now here goes. I don't really give a damn about the threats or whatever, but I promise you this. I will make your rest of your stay in jail that you got to carry out a miserable ass one. A miserable one. So I would truly advise that motherfucker to watch what he says about me. It was crazy. I was so happy. Like, like when I said so happy, I was so freaking happy. Um, that he was out of my house, like on some real shit. You know, you care, you care for somebody. You truly do care for somebody. And it's like. They start using you and taking that as a blindness and because you care about them. And then you just start seeing little things like, who is so petty? If that's the case, I could be on some shit and like, well, you can give me the shit that I gave you. You know what I mean? Petty shit like that. Always trying to compare himself, trying to tell me, oh, me and my daughter, my oldest daughter, all we do is hang out together. I'm probably over at her apartment and I'm probably messing with some dudes over there like on some real shit. Uh, I don't think so. All right. But I will say this, since he went ahead and texted old dude that I first started messing with out here, you know, we started conversing back and forth, texting each other and shit. And I'm like, oh, word, this is what was said. This is what was said, like, yo, you are on some real nigga bitch shit. Like, dude, you really texting people that you don't even know. You don't really know who they are. And what the fuck they can do to you. Not to mention, they're not stupid. I, I just, I, the whole situation like blew my fucking mind way out of the water. The things that I started finding out and shit. And then at the end, I felt so freaking happy. But I felt so fucking stupid. Like, oh my God. Did I really, really, really give this nigga a chance? Did I really, 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 really make myself vulnerable like that i knew there was some shady shit but i felt like well april maybe this is just your overprotective wall that's up because of your last situation with your kid's father and so forth with your ex maybe that's what it is and you're just being paranoid no, my antennas was up and they stayed the fuck up okay and i just started really really investigating shit when you go back to New York and shit like that, like, hmm, crazy, like, just crazy. And so now it's like, okay, I'm so happy I'm single again. And, oh, my God, I'm just like, I prayed every night to God, like, just get him away from me. Just get him away from me. And it's bad if you pray to God to get somebody away from you. That means you really cannot stand them and they're unattractive. But who are you to call me fat? When you look like a silver back, okay? Like, really? Dude, you don't really have much going on for yourself. I'm fat. You got to be kidding me, okay? That nigga, all right, that nigga really needed to lose a lot of weight. And you're going to call me fat and out of shape? I might be a little bit out of shape, but I'm far from fat and I'm far from ugly. And if I was fat, so what? Who are you to judge anybody when you looking like that? At least... I can get up in the mirror and look like something. What can you do? There is no way you're going to change your nasty disposition. You are who you are. You know what I'm saying? He just was talking massive shit about me. And she just was like, yeah, okay, whatever, whatever. I'm not really trying to hear it. I'm not trying to hear it. Just talking like massive shit about me. And I know he was because he would say certain things. Like um, he told her that I had an infection in my mouth. And I just came back from the doctor. 
I have a sinus infection and it's not in my mouth. I have to spray the Flonase up in my nose and take allergy pills. He tried to tell me that. He tried to tell her that, yeah, she got an infection in her mouth and I need to go to the doctors with her. Can I come with her to the doctors? Like, really though? And um, he told me, well, you better tell that nigga that she was last fucker who busted off in your mouth. Like, yo, the nigga is really trying to disrespect. But all I can say to people like that and to men like that, you guys are so whack. Like, if you can go around talking about your own kid because he talked about our son, and you can talk about my eight-year-old daughter and then talk about your other kids like they were a shit to me, um, then there is a huge red flag and something is totally wrong with you mentally. Like, who does that? You're 43 years old. You don't have no goals. You ain't got no hopes in life. You ain't, you, your A-game is old. You're washed. You're old. You know what I'm saying? You're outdated. There's really nothing attractive about you, but a bitch tried to give you a chance because she felt some type of way towards you. And you talking massive shit when all the shit that you're saying about me is basically you talking about yourself, but you put it in a female version. You know what I'm saying? And for you to say, like, I beg you for sex, I ain't never beg no motherfucking body for sex, nor do I need to or have to. If it gets to that point, like I said, I have a toy. But why the fuck would I beg for sex for somebody that gives you dick for three minutes and Harley can keep his dick hard, okay? Like, do you need Viagra, motherfucker? And on top of that, <laughs> really, dude? I have met many that were packing, and you ain't one of them. I'm just saying, I guess when dudes get big and heavy, their dick shrinks. Maybe that was the case because I have said to him many a times, what's going on? You, your, your dick don't stay hard. Is it me? You're not attracted to me. Or, you know what I'm saying? I've said to him before because he actually tried to compare himself to my ex asking me, well, who was bigger? And I really didn't want to touch that topic with him. And I kept saying and he kept just asking and asking. So I finally gave in. It was like, my ex, my ex. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that made him feel some type of way, but you asked the question, and I told you I didn't want to answer it, and I told you, and I told you, but you kept on pressing me, so this is what I got to tell you. You know what I'm saying? My ex. And yes, he was good in the bed. Maybe that's why I stayed so long. However, why the hell would I beg some non-fucking three-minute little dick motherfucker to fuck me? Like, some, when you have sex with somebody, first of all, sex is so overrated. Second of all, when you're having sex with somebody, you should feel like you just had sex. You know what I'm saying? You should feel like that inside. A bitch didn't feel shit. Okay? I felt kind of let down, if that's the case. And like I said, I wasn't going to get on here and bash him. I was just going to leave it at that. But now you want to talk shit about me. You call me all kind of names. I'm this, I'm that. Telling her, oh, look at her legs. She got legs like old lady. Ah, okay. Now you go in there, you touching a very touchy subject. So I'm light skinned and I have varicose veins because I have poor circulation in my leg. And you can see some of them. And it makes me very self-conscious. So, of course, she did not know this. But I know he said that. But obviously, it was good for you when you was up in my face. And now that I done had you arrested, I'm this and I'm that. Niggas are a trip. Men are a trip. That's why I say non-purpose ass motherfuckers. I'm going to stay single for as long as I can possibly stay single. I am really not interested in having a relationship with anybody at this point. And I absolutely mean that. If I have an itch that needs to be scratched, well, listen, I already have somebody that I know that I've dealt with before since I've been living, thanks to him retexting him, okay, if I'm really in the need. However, I'm not even interested in sex because it's so overrated, and it's like this. some You, you give somebody a piece, and they feel like, oh, there's so much more with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm not saying I'm going to go around being a thought. I'm not saying I'm going to go around being a hoe. However, I'm not just going to 
jump into another relationship. I don't even want to be in a relationship. I love my single life. I love living here with just me and my children. You know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody calling my phone. Ask me when you're coming back. Oh, I'm hungry. Where you going? What you doing? You know, I don't, I, I don't need that, nor do I want that. Like, I like being a free soul, a free spirit. I do as I please, and I come and go as I please. And that's how I've always been. You know what I'm saying? When you get out of a relationship with somebody that you've been with for so long, and you get out of that relationship, it's hard to get into another relationship. You start seeing all type of things. That's when your antennas stick up more because you notice things and you're always on the lookout for shit. And sometimes I might have been a little bit too paranoid. However, there's never too much paranoia, especially when it comes to getting involved with someone because you really don't know their true motives and their true agendas. And so, and I say this all the time and I say it to you guys, but then that's where I felt so freaking stupid because I'm like, damn, what the fuck? But then over time, I was like, you know what? This nigga got to get out of my face. I ain't trying to be with him no more. I don't want to be with him. He's a loser. And I really started feeling this way for months and months and months. And it just was like, oh, God, shake it off and go. Just like fucking go. Please just fucking go. And finally, my prayers were answered. And yes. It's unfortunate that it had to go down like that. Like, you're not going to come to my house and be trying to rule my shit and be trying to take over and, and shit like that. Like, man, please, go ahead and get your life and get somewhere. You really don't know the bitch that you fucking with. So that's how my relationship ended. And I will be honest, I did not shed not one tear. Honestly, when he went to jail, I was like, yes. I was so happy because I'm rid of you. You out of my face. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to be bothered with you. I, you know what I mean? Like, you don't really want to ever wish jail on somebody, but when they do things to you that are so uncalled for and they try to put hands on you, then, dude, you put yourself there. I didn't put you there. You put yourself there. You going around doing bitch moves, talking about females, talking about your kids to people, talking about other people's kids. Like, who does that? You don't never talk about nobody's fucking kids. And you ain't about to sit here or, or wherever on social media and talk about my fucking kids. Not today, not tomorrow, not at no given time. And like I said, watch who you watch who you toes you try to step on. Because you can step on the wrong motherfucker's toes and you will really get yours. Okay? I'm just saying. So that's how it ended. And I thought I would share that with you girls and guys because... You have to be leery at all times. All times. So, now, on to our um, Real Talk videos. Okay. Now, this one is pretty damn long. Oh, my God, long. Okay. Hey, April. I want to start off by saying I love your videos. And your personality, so down to earth. I always tell my fiance that you remind me of Marsha Ambrosia. A Ambrose, excuse me, smiles. So I have been hearing that a lot for the past couple of years that I look like Marsha Ambrose. I don't really think so. I don't really think so. Like, I don't think we look anything alike. Her nose is totally different. She's beautiful, but I don't really think we look alike. But either way, um, I get that a lot, and I do, um, I do like the compliments, so I do thank you. Well, I'm coming to you for some advice, and what and what you are about to read is a lot of too many things shaking my head. But because but I have changed the names and hold on to your seat because it's a ride. I will try to keep it short as possible. So she's telling me that this is a ride, bitch. I just came off a fucking ride. My name is Trina, and my fiance's name is T. This is a lesbian relationship, and we've been together for 12 years, and we are engaged. Three years ago, I cheated on my fiancé with this girl named Siobhan. This is before my fiancé and I became engaged. I met Siobhan in a secret group on Facebook, which was Siobhan's secret lesbian group. Someone added me to this group, and I was in this group for two months before I actually ever went inside this group, which I wish every day I never entered that devil-ass group. I regret it so much. Well, to make this, make this short, the girl Siobhan pursued me, and by the way, she had a girlfriend as well that she lived with. I didn't take her serious at all because she lived in Chicago and I lived in D.C. 
Siobhan and I would talk on the phone all the time, every day, all day. And at this time, me and my fiance weren't living together. But Siobhan and her girlfriend were living together. So we would basically talk on the phone all night long after her girlfriend left for work. Well, as time went on, Siobhan started telling me how much she loved me and she's falling so hard for me. But she always made it clear that she did not have a girlfriend. Excuse me. She always made it clear that she did have a girlfriend and she was not leaving her. Which was cool because I wasn't at first taking this or her serious and I didn't want her and I wasn't leaving my girlfriend either. So basically it was supposed to be all fun and games until I started catching feelings too. And the feelings I had grew stronger and stronger. And she claimed she was in love with me. So things started changing in my real life with my girlfriend. I started treating her different, not spending any time with her and pretty much acting like she didn't exist all for this no good chick. At the end of the day, I started dissing my girlfriend and hurting her feelings. I told her I didn't want nothing to do with her and she knew what was going on and she couldn't believe that I was dissing her for someone who had someone who has someone. Oh, she couldn't believe I was dissing her for someone who already has someone. Honestly, at that time in my life, I really don't know what I was thinking. I couldn't believe how I was acting and I didn't even know who I was anymore. My family and friends were all upset with me telling me that I changed and they couldn't believe that I was dealing with someone all the way in Chicago who's not leaving their own girlfriend for me. Well, I went out to Chicago twice to see Siobhan. We met in April of 2013 and then again in June 2013. And honestly, both times I went out there were terrible. Both times. It just wasn't what I expected. That's all. Well, after I went out there in June, things were different. Everything changed and everything went downhill from that moment. It's amazing how things come back together and my girlfriend came back into my life because we broke up and stopped talking completely for like four to five months straight. She was hurt and I felt so bad inside about the whole situation. She has never cheated on me. She has never put me through any BS with any other females ever for the whole 12 years. And I'm lucky to have her because Siobhan has cheated on her girlfriend a bunch of times before I ever walked into the picture. Well, when me and T started back talking, we started back getting close slowly. So we just wanted to make sure that Siobhan was completely out the picture. And at first she was, but out of the blue, Siobhan came back into the picture. And to make a long story short, T and Siobhan ended up finding out that I was talking to both of them. And they end up having a conversation. I think that was really messed up on Siobhan's part because just like I knew, and even T left the picture for a while because I was cheating on her with Siobhan. It was not Siobhan's place to tell my girlfriend nothing, period. She said because I was lying to her about it. And I was lying behind my girlfriend's back. But even if I was, so what? She had someone and lived with her. And not only that, but left the picture for a little while, uh, for a little minute. So what I was doing or who I was talking to was my business not Siobhan's. And if I owe anyone the truth or any explanation, it's my girlfriend T, not Siobhan. So things kind of turned bad to worse. And after they had conversations, my mother, yes, my mother told me to contact her girlfriend and tell her girlfriend what was going on. My mother felt like ever since that girl came into my life, she has done nothing but turn my world upside down. So she felt like it was fair to me to contact her girlfriend since she keeps having conversations with my girlfriend. So basically, her mother told her to contact Siobhan's girlfriend. Okay. So she felt like it was fair for me to contact Siobhan's girlfriend since she keeps having conversations with my girlfriend T and causing all this drama and problems all the way from Chicago. So I tried to contact her girlfriend by sending her an inbox message through Facebook, but Siobhan has her girlfriend's passcode to Facebook. So instead of her girlfriend getting the message, Siobhan got it. Siobhan goes on Facebook and uploaded new pictures of me all over social media. And the real fucked up part is the pictures she uploaded were pictures she was taking of me without me knowing when I was around her. And I was fully nude and she was snapping pictures of me and I had no idea. So yeah, it was ugly and it got extremely ugly. I was hurt. I was very hurt. I had so many thoughts going through my head. And I was just so depressed because I had never had anyone do anything like that to me before. So many people seen the pictures. It was the worst day of my life. 
I do believe that was nothing but karma for all the hurt and pain and lies I was putting on my girlfriend T. So she didn't deserve the way I was treating her for someone who was never worth it. And the craziest part, besides my family and friends, T was there for me, wiping tears away from my face after Siobhan did that. That was in 2013. And since 2013 to now, 2016, things has changed between T and I. T has forgiven me for what I did. We went to counseling together, which was the best decision. We have grown extremely closer than we have ever before. I have... I have cheated on her we have not we have got engaged and we have moved into our own house together so yes things have been so much different and i'm loving it well siobhan has been contacting me telling me how bad how sorry she is for what she has done and she feels so bad about it by the way she puts the new pics of me up on august 2013 and started contacting me november of 2013 all the way now to this present day of may 2016 she sends me those long messages about how she is still in love with me. And she even sent me a message asking me to not get married to T. And she will end the relationship with her girlfriend if I break it off with my fiancé. Every time she contacts me, I let my fiancé know. I read all of her inbox messages to my fiancé. So she knows everything and she wants to contact Siobhan. But I told her no. For what? I'm sorry, but in my opinion, she's not worth it. But she wants her to know what she, um, that she knows. So my girlfriend wants um, Siobhan to know that she knows that she's contacting me. I also been I'm I also been having really mixed feelings about contacting Siobhan's girlfriend. I have another way to contact her, and I have all my proof. And this time I'm not worried about the new pictures because she has already put them out there, so that doesn't phase me. I'm just confused because she went through all that putting my new pictures out there on blast like that. Once her girlfriend found out about me, she made it seem like I was a jump off and she had got all these other females involved that she doesn't even know outside of Facebook. When she posted those new pictures of me, but nobody knows that she is still contacting me. So what the fuck was the purpose of her doing that if she was still going to contact me? She does everything behind social media. She's a social media thug. So in your opinion, April, do you think my fiance should contact her and should I contact the girlfriend? It's so much stuff I wanted to add, but this is long already. Shaking my head. But thank you for taking the time to read this. I just want your input. So, Trina has been in a relationship for 12 years with T. And she was automatically put in a group on Facebook by um, someone. And it was a lesbian group. Siobhan is the leader of the lesbian group. Her and Javon start exchanging words back and forth, like not bad words, but you know, getting to like each other and whatever. She went out there and visited Siobhan, she on her girlfriend. Siobhan ends up putting new pictures of her up on Facebook, blasting her, basically bashing the shit out of her. And her relationship, Trina's relationship went downhill. And now Siobhan is trying to contact Trina again. But she ain't trying to, the bitch is contacting her. And she wants to know what should she do. Should she contact Siobhan's girlfriend? And should her girlfriend, T, or her fiancé, rather, T, contact Siobhan? First of all, here's my thing. How is she contacting you through Facebook again? Why don't you block that bitch? Because if you block her, doesn't that mean that they cannot contact you anymore? It obviously does because I have people that have been blocked and sending me dumbass messages. One, just, just, just fuck the fuckery. And um, I block their ass. And they can't contact me no more. It's not that hard. Obviously, you must like the drama if you ain't blocked that bitch. Block her from fucking contacting you. Block her. Put out a police report on her ass. Because that is internet harassment. You can't do shit like that over the internet. Doing shit over the internet, internet mean bullying, cyber thugging, cyber bullying, doing shit with bank accounts and money. Okay, as I was saying before, my car got full. Doing shit over the internet to anybody, mean, um, anything unlawful on the internet is a federal offense, okay? So, 
first of all, I ain't saying be no snitch, but I'm not about to let anybody be harassing me on no type of social media or no type of bullshit. And if she is contacting you via Facebook, then there is called the block button where you don't have to engage in conversation with her. No, I wouldn't confront her, her girlfriend about the situation, nor would I have my fiance confronting Siobhan about the situation. That's just going to feed into the fire. Why jump into the flame with somebody? The girl or something is wrong with her mentally. We have we meet people like this all the time who are stalkers or weirdos or crazy will do mean shit and say mean fucking shit about you and then want to reverse it and try to either point the finger and the blame on you or become friends with you again. Either way, if you have somebody that is harassing you or trying to contact you through Facebook and you don't want them to talk to you or be bothered with them, there is the block button and there is the report harassment as well. So that was the first thing that I would do. I wouldn't even conversate with the girl. I wouldn't even go back and forth with her. I wouldn't contact her girlfriend. Obviously, her girlfriend already knows about you because she considered you, Siobhan considered you, to be a jump off to her girlfriend. So what are you going to tell her that she doesn't already know or not know? It doesn't really matter. She already knows about you. It doesn't matter if she, uh, if you confront her and say, hey, your girlfriend Siobhan is still contacting me. Obviously, it doesn't matter to her because she's still there. She's been cheated on many a times by Siobhan, and she sticks it out, and she's still there. So you were the jump off. She knows that. Siobhan has already explained that to her. There's really no reason for you to go ahead and engage yourself in conversation with Siobhan's girlfriend because it's not going to make a difference. Regardless of what you say, Siobhan and her girlfriend are going to be a couple until one of them get really tired of each other and go their separate ways. As for your fiancé, why drag her into the middle of some bullshit that she had nothing to do with from the start? This was on your counterpart, Trina. This is what you did, okay? This is the trouble that you stirred up. So now you need to be responsible and deal with it and take the proper precautions to get this resolved. I wouldn't go back and forth with this crazy bitch. For what? So then that way she can go ahead and blast some other shit or repost the naked photos of you. So what? They're naked photos. If somebody want to post a naked photo of me, then go ahead. Hello. Whatever. Hello. I don't really give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the incident after a while that shit is going to die down. However, she went ahead and took those steps to blast you with nude pics that she was taking of you. First of all, you should have never been there. I don't really care if it's a lesbian or gay man relationship. No one should cheat on anybody, especially off of some social media that you meet. There's random bitches on social media that you don't even know what they're really about. They can tell you a ghost in the story, a story for days. And you, of course, are going to fall for it because you really don't know this person. Look at my situation. I heard it all and it wasn't even on social media, okay? So this is what I'm saying about people and their true agendas. You don't really know this girl. You don't really know what she's capable of doing. Why even get yourself involved with it? Why are you allowing her to contact you? There is a block button. She should not be contacting you if you are blocking her. And if you're not blocking her, then you really need to report it to Facebook and put a police report on her for harassment. Because for one, I'm not going to sit there and allow nobody harass me. If you are in a relationship with somebody, that person, you've won them back, then why would you even bother to get her involved with this bullshit? that she had nothing to do with from the start. Don't irritate and stress her the fuck out because you wanted to do you at the time and this is the result. And I'm not saying it's good for you. However, I'm pretty sure the next time you'll know a whole lot fucking better because now you got some fucking idiotic stalker who really don't give a fuck about making your life hell, trying to apologize and say she feels bad. That bitch don't really feel bad. She's just trying to get back up in your pants. She acting like a boy because that's what guys do. They apologize and they go back to doing their same foolishness and their same craziness. So why even give her the time of day by letting her know, okay, I accept your apology and I'm going to confront your girlfriend. There's no need to confront Siobhan's girlfriend. There's no need for your fiancé T to show confront Siobhan. Leave it the fuck alone and block her and do a police report. And I guarantee you, I bet you that bitch will leave you the fuck alone then. I'm going to tell you this. I don't have time for that social media bully thug shit. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? I really, really don't. Nor do I not even have time for bullshit right in my face. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tolerate certain shit not today, not tomorrow, not next week, next month, next year. I'm not going to tolerate certain dumb shit. If you want to go ahead with that dumb shit, then carry on with yourself. But me personally, I'm not going to deal with the headache from no man or female. And that's just the bottom line. My opinion to you would be to totally block that bitch and not have anything to do with her. It's just that easy. It's just that fucking easy. So let Trina know what you would do in the situation. 
The next one. April, I'm dealing with a stalker ex, and it is really affecting me. You can call my stalker ex, Bryson. Me and Bryson were talking for a few months, and when I decided to end it, he went nuts. At the time they, that we were talking, I thought that I was ready for a relationship, and we began talking about getting together and possibly starting a family. Once I saw the real him, I decided that he is not the right one for me, so I ended it. This psycho went completely nuts. He threatened to kill himself numerous times, kill any man that I decided to date, and ruin any relationship that I get into. He even told me that he gave me an STD. When he told me that, I ran to the clinic to get tested, and it was negative for everything. He admitted that he lied because he wanted me to feel disgusted with myself for having unprotected sex with him. I regret ever meeting his crazy ass. I didn't plan on moving when my lease was up, but I had to move so that he no longer knew my address. I had blocked his number from calling, but he still calls me blocked to antagonize me. I can't change my number because of my business opportunities, but I might just have to. He stalks me on IG and Facebook. I'm about to just delete all social media so he can't find out if I get into any relationship. This is giving me horrible anxiety because I know that he will contact people in my life to ruin situations and relationships. At this point, I wish he would just kill himself so I don't have to deal with this constantly daily harassment. I don't really mean that, but what can I do to get Bryson to leave me the hell alone? You can call me Rochelle. Thank you so much. Now see? Same shit with my just so-called past relationship. He said he was going to kill himself to his other baby mother. Nigga, go ahead. Kill yourself. So these are my alarms. It's time for me to wake up if I was taking a nap. Um, if you want to kill yourself, that men who say I'm going to kill themselves, I'm going to kill myself, they don't really want to kill themselves. Unfortunately, sometimes we wish they would like, you know what, just go ahead, do it. Get it out the way because life would be a whole lot better without you. You're doing community, you're doing the community and world of justice by killing your motherfucking self. Go ahead. I will give you the noose to hang yourself with. Okay, and I'm pretty sure, Rochelle, that you did not mean that. However, what do you do about a stalker? He's constantly harassing you on social media and shit, calling your phone privately. Um, you moved because he's call he, he knew where you were living. Listen, if he's crazy now, what could you imagine that he would see you out in public and just start bugging the fuck out? If he's doing things on social media to you, I would definitely take screenshots of everything that he has done and is doing, and I would record conversations. If you can record, some phones will enable you to record while you're talking to the person. I would record conversations with him on the phone. So that way I take that shit to the police. I just said in the last situation to go to the, property, the proper authority, and this time around, you should go to the proper authority. You know what I'm saying? Calling your phone, knowing where you live, stalking you, stalking you, stalking you. That is all stalking, stalking, stalking. And that's all signs of a crazy, not so fucking mentally there person, okay? Why do you think I did what I did? I called the police and on the next day, I went to the courts and got an order of protection. Because I don't want you nowhere near me. I don't want you coming nowhere near my house. I don't want you coming nowhere near my kids. Bitch, I don't want you fucking contacting me. If you contact me or you have a third party contact me, that is a violation. And I really highly consider and say to people, if you have some drained delusional fucking boyfriend or ex-boyfriend or stalker, then get the proper authorities on him. Not everybody likes to call the police, okay, because we can be known as cop callers or what have you or snitches because we're telling or whatever. But you're not about to ruin my life. And you're not about to threaten me. And you're not about to hurt me. So I'm protecting me and my surroundings and my family. Now, here's the thing. Me personally, I would change my phone number. And all those business opportunities that you have, I would contact them and give them my new contact information. I seriously feel like the same thing. I have not got a phone call from him. But I'm starting to feel like if he even tries me on my phone... Well, I'll just get you violated on more charges. However, I don't even want you to have my phone number no more. So I'm thinking the same thing. Like, okay, I think I'm going to change my phone number. I've had the same phone number for three years now. And um, I just don't really want to be involved with any of the bullshit and drama. Like, 
April don't have time for that shit. April's not about to deal with that shit. When you got somebody that's crazy and deranged in your life and you have gotten them out of your life because you see certain signs of not so there signs, then you have to take every precaution, every measurement to protect yourself and make you feel safe. When you start seeing signs of a man that are really not cool with you or unattractive, you need to take precautions and make sure that you're protecting yourself. And that's what I did. Unfortunately, it had to start off in a battle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did not move out here to Arizona to be battling nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to be 42 years old next month. And I'm really not about to be out here battling somebody. I'm not about to take bullshit from some man and think that you're going to calm me and get over on me. I'm not going to allow you to harass me. And that's what you are allowing him to do because you're not doing anything about it but just blocking him and ignoring the situation. You can ignore it but so long and then after a while it starts to really become a pain and it really starts to bother you. And like you just said, you have anxiety. I'm not about to allow any man to bring me out of my comfort zone and make me feel stressed out and have fucking worries and anxiety because your dumb, stupid ass want to be fucking harassing me and doing fuckery bullshit. It's men like this that give the good men a bad name. And bitches too. You know what I'm saying? And bitches too. Me, for one, I'm not tolerating none of the bullshit. I'm not about to. And I really, really, Rochelle, think that you don't need to be tolerating none of the bullshit neither. You got somebody like that, girl, by all means, take the proper measurements and get his ass dealt with. If you know where he works or where he lives, then I would have his ass served papers, uh, order protection to stay the fuck. And don't contact me. No way. No email, no text message, no private call, no none of that. And that's what you need to do. That way, if some shit pop off and you have to really literally hurt this man, then you already have it in paper and documents like, look, I already put this out on him and he still constantly contacted me and now he then came to my place of business or he see me outside the street and he tried to come at me and I had to fuck his ass up. But this is the proof. You always got to make sure that you secure your surroundings and secure yourself. Have your ducks in a row. You know what I'm saying? You always have to do that. It don't matter if it's with friend, man, girlfriend, whatever. You always need to make sure that you take the proper measurements for your own self. Look what the fuck that I just had to go through with some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So if you really want to bash me and talk shit about me, talk about ah, that fat, ugly bitch and all of this shit, like, really, nigga? Really? Are you serious right now? Like, okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now, if you try to hurt me in any type of way, and not mean physically, but like with my social media or my business, you know, my personal business or whatever, try to hurt hurt me in any type of way, then I already have my ducks in a row and I have a document stating this nigga came to my motherfucking house and tried to attack me. Like on some real shit. Nigga, please. Girl, please, Rochelle, you need to do exactly what the fuck I did. Some people might be like, oh, it's just a piece of paper. It ain't going to stop him from trying to kick my door in. That may be so. However, if the nigga kick your door in and you got to fucking hurt him real bad, here is your proof. That is just one way of protecting yourself. Point blank, period. So, on that note, I was only able to do three. I really wanted to do a fourth one, but I am running out of time. I have five minutes to get to the school and get my daughters. This is their last week of school out here in August. I mean, August. In Arizona, they, they are done in May. So, this is their last week until August the 5th. So, they'll be out of school. And, um, yeah, I got to go pick them up. <laughs> well, but they, their school is right in the subdivision where I live at. So, that's a good thing. But yes, you guys, thank you for staying tuned. And as always, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, leave your comments below. And make sure you check out my son's clothing line. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. And I'll post this information for you girls below. And stay away from them non-purpose-ass Negroes, okay?